Hello, this is New Vision TV. I am Lynn Komjisha. In the first years of the NRM government, it nursed an ambition to balance its budget and enjoy independence by steadily reducing the debt component and increase revenue collection. A few years ago, as the government was about to hit the target of financing its budget by 100%, it reverted to borrowing and is back to funding half of the budget by borrowing. New Vision TV examines the reasons, benefits and implications of this change. The coming 2017-2018 budget is about 29 trillion shillings but will only be funded to a tune of 14 trillion shillings by URA tax collection. Government will also raise about half a trillion in non-tax revenue from services like issuance of passports, work permits and dividends from well-performing state enterprises. Half of the budget will be financed by borrowing. Half of the loans for the new budget, meaning a quarter of the entire budget will be borrowed from external sources while the other will be borrowed internally. So the external lenders will contribute about 7 trillion shillings and the internal borrowing will bring in 7 trillion as well. The growing use of internal borrowing is partly because of the ease of getting the money. Government just issues instruments like treasury bills and bonds, which commercial banks rush to buy because they are virtually risk-free. Unfortunately, internal borrowing is astronomically expensive, with bonds earning up to 20% interest per year. This is even four times more expensive than the external commercial lenders. There is no comparison with the World Bank, whose loans are taken at concession rates of below 1%, payable after a grace period of up to eight years. The other danger of domestic borrowing is that it takes the commercial banks unwilling to lend to the private sector when they can make astronomical profits by simply buying government papers. Actually, the Minister of Finance is still engaged in efforts to cut down on the domestic borrowing component of the budget up to the last minute before presenting the budget. But it is known out of recklessness that the government has resumed borrowing heavily. This has been necessitated by the need to fund big infrastructure projects that cannot wait. But the immediate financial implication is that this borrowing means that an increasingly large chunk of the tax collection is going into debt servicing. It could actually be up to half of URS collection going to debt servicing. Borrowing is one of the quickest ways to finance development, and most governments in the world, led by the United States, rely heavily on borrowing. What Uganda needs to do is to ensure that the borrowed funds do exactly what they are meant to do so that the country generates the capacity to pay back. You're still watching New Vision TV, and now for a Pearl of Africa series, we take a look at River Katonga. River Katonga is located in the southern part of Uganda, in Remyaga County, Sembawale District. This stream forms a connection between Lake Victoria and Lake George, reflecting that it once drained away from Lake Victoria into Lake George along its entire length. Let's take a look. There are various types of exotic plants that lie on River Katonga. These are breathtaking, and the birds that float on top of it are quite adorable. Katonga has also got animals which keep cold beneath its waters. These have led to what we now call the Katonga Wildlife Reserve. Getting to River Katonga is only three and a half hours from Kampala by road, as shown on this Google map. So now tell me. Why would you not love to come tell your own story after spending some time at River Katonga? And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more of your updates on your mobile, on your desktop, on your tablet, anywhere on the go by visiting www.newvision.co.ug. I am Lynn Komjisha.